Hi, I'm Lou Green. Welcome to America's Crossroads. Hi, I'm Lou Green. Welcome to America's Crossroads. Today we're going to Essex, Connecticut to meet a wonderful piano player, Jeff Barnhart, at the Hot Steamed Jazz Festival. Then from there, I on Tampa Bay is going to uh, go to the 912 Project Patriot Camp. And then we're off to Kandersteg, Switzerland. And this is a place in the Kander Valley where the Boy Scouts have been camping out since the 1920s. So let's hit the road. Hi, I'm Lou Green and America's Crossroads is now in Essex, Connecticut at the Hot Steam Jazz Festival. Why do they call it the Hot Steam Jazz Festival? Well, take a look behind me here. This is how we used to get around. The Iron Horse. Mama, every night. Hi, Jeff. Hi, I'm Lou Green with America's Crossroads, and I'm with Jeff Barnhart, and we are at the Hot Steam Jazz Festival in Essex, Connecticut. What do you know about that, Jeff? Well, this is the 22nd year, and uh, I remember meeting you, Lou, in 1987, the first year that the festival happened here when it was called the Great Connecticut Traditional Jazz Festival. We were, we were little back then. Well, I think we were actually pretty, we were pretty big. I mean, maybe, <laughs> I think we both lost a bit of weight. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff is a piano player extraordinaire and a uh, band leader extraordinaire. Tell me about yourself. What is there to say? You know, my mom said be a doctor, and of course, you never listen to your mother, so I became a, a traditional jazz pianist, and I travel the world spreading the joy and making as much music as I can. So instead of becoming a doctor, you became a patient. <laughs> I don't know how much patience I have anymore. And the music goes round and round. <laughs> and it comes out here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how much fun do you have doing this stuff? If it weren't for the fun, I wouldn't be doing it, Lou, and yeah. you know that. I mean, well, you know, you they don't say, get the money. They say if, if you like what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life. That's right. And, and that's why the operative word in music is play. That's right. If we're playing and we're having a good time, we're laughing, mm -hmm. making ourselves happy, the people will come right with you. Okay, tell me about your two greatest milestones. My two greatest milestones. Uh, yeah. You mean besides this interview? Yeah, besides this. All right, good. Uh, <laughs> I got to dig deep then. <laughs> you know, I would say uh, two things come to mind. The travels in jazz have brought me to uh, Rwanda, mm -hmm. and I brought over a, a small band, including my wife on flute. And we, uh, the guy wanted us to bring ragtime back to its roots. And I had no desire to tell him all we had to do was St. Louis because I've been there right. before. <laughs> so I said, Rwanda? Yeah, we'll come. You okay, know? Fine. So we were two weeks there. And uh, that was, I, I really realized I'd never truly been in a foreign country yet until I reached those shores. That oh, was, yeah. Central Africa is just something to, you have to experience to even begin to believe oh, one, yeah. how lucky we are to be where we are. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people in this country think Africa is a country. Uh, you know, three United States fit in Africa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we a had, large place. <laughs> so we had a real great opportunity. We were there under the auspices of the Swiss uh, diplomat mm -hmm. to Rwanda, and he uh, took great care of us. And then the other one was bringing a band over to Israel. Mm -hmm. for the Kezaria Jazz Festival and having a Roman wall right behind you, uh, thousands of years old, and playing Panama for 2,500 Israelis sitting in lawn chairs oh, on a yeah. beautiful Mediterranean night. Well, we all have a lot of uh, funny things happen. I, I, uh, I had a, a gig in Cairo uh, with, a, with a whole room full of uh, locals where we were doing the Sheik of Araby, <laughs> and, and the people loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And also we had another one. We did the Sultan's harem. 
Do you know that song? <laughs> I do. Oh, in the Salt and Serum. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, and that's the funny thing. Is you, play in Indi- you play the song back home again in Indiana, and Indiana, they don't care. No. See, that's what it is. That's what and, it is, yeah. And also, you know, when you talk about those places, we've all been mm-hmm. around the world with the music taking us there, oh, you yeah. know? Yeah. But whenever we mention places like that, like here in Connecticut, it might say, oh, I've played in Rwanda, and Lou's played in Egypt, and they'll go, ooh. But if we went to Egypt or Rwanda and say, hey, next week we're playing in Essex, Connecticut, yeah. they'd go, ooh. Well, <laughs> we, we played in Russia, and that blew up. Then we played in Tunisia, that blew up. Then we played in Cairo, and that blew up. Well, in other words, uh, get out of Essex now. <laughs> <laughs> get out. <laughs> the clouds are coming. Is that steam engine getting bigger? <laughs> we're, we're in front of the old 97 here, <laughs> right there. And uh, if you um, do a little musical history, you can hear Vernon Delhart's, uh, I think, a 1906 or 7 recording of uh, The Wreck of the Old 97. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? One thing is so wonderful, and I'm sure many of the people with whom you've uh, had some time to interview and talk, the, today the technology is both for us and against us, as it always has right. been. Yeah. YouTube is such a magnificent tool yeah. to encourage people to hear the music we love yeah. and to check out America's musical past and every, everything about the history of our great country mm-hmm. because it's all there. Yeah. You can find the record of the 97. You put in that sure. name, oh, you yeah. put in the title, and it'll show up on YouTube. It's right there. Kids can hear it, and that's what, what should be happening. We it is to, happening. Well, we used to have to dig around on our hands and knees for weeks looking for <laughs> stuff that wasn't there. You know, I mean, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how easy they have it now. Oh no, we gifted them this great. We gifted them this great pile of use, useless stuff. You know? It's growing. Oh, it's growing. But anyway, I appreciate your time, Jeff. Thank and you. Uh, you have a website. I do. Uh, JeffBarnhart.com. Just go to that, and you'll find out all the things I'm doing and what places to avoid in case I might be there. And, and, and you and your wife perform together. We do. We have a duo called Ivory and Gold. Yeah. Ivory for the piano keys and gold for uh, Anne's flute. Yeah. And uh, that's that's actually getting a lot of wonderful opportunity to perform. She's a, a wonderful flautist and a, a good partner, and she sells CDs sometimes when she's not working. On the side. Yeah, that's what she, you know, she says, I'm not, I'm not just a CD salesperson. I said, yeah, you're not doing that well at that either, so play the flute. <laughs> well, thank you. And, uh, you know, we have more fun than real people, I hope. We do. Yeah. We do. And you, wherever you are, find us and uh, continue on America's Crossroads and come have fun with us, because that's what this is all about. Wherever the roads cross, that's where they need a band. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the fork in the road. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lou. Thank you. 97. <laughs> so a lot of these saloon players would play any kind of stuff you wanted to hear. Whatever the audience was interested in, they would do. And some smart Alex sometimes would come in and say, hey, play some classical music. So here you go.
to see Sharon Calvert and I on Tampa Bay. Let's go. Hi, this is Sharon Calvert and I'm with Eye on Tampa Bay. Today I'm with Joan Garcia and we're here at the Tampa 912 Patriots Camp. And I'm just going to ask Joan, give us a little information about what this camp is and, and how you started, how you got involved. Well, the Tampa 912 Project has wanted to educate youth in the founding of our country for many years. This is the fourth year that we have been doing that. 
This year, we've got a really new project of the Tampa Patriot Camp, and we have about 60 campers this year. Well, that's wonderful. And what age group um, are, are you targeting with the camp? Mainly 6 to 12 years old. We have a few younger, and we have a few older. Well, that's wonderful. Tell me a little bit about the different stations that you have set up here. As they walk through the doors into Independence Hall, they step back in time. And then we have various stations called Liberty Landing, Freedom Square, and Oak Tree Tavern. And they learn various things. But I don't want to use the word learn because we really want to inspire our patriots. We want to we don't want them to feel like they're going to school. We want them to experience what it is, experience the battles, experience what it was like to be a child during colonial times. Yesterday they made butter, and that was their snack of the day. So we really do a lot of interactive activities. Well, we saw that as we were here, and I think um, even with you, uh, I think you're also known as Betsy Ross. Yes, I am. I usually am in the station of tea with the president, and we do tea with President Washington, Lady Washington, and General Nathaniel Green, and we invite the campers to tea. Well, this sounds so exciting, and I'll just ask one more question. Um, tell our viewers, why should they come to Patriot Cam Patriots Camp? Well, actually, we have a lot of people that are repeat customers, and they learn something different each time. They, they are inspired by history, and that's our goal. We don't want them to sit here and have to listen to a lecture. We want them to jump in with two feet, and they usually do. Well, this is so exciting, and what we'll do is um, we hope that next year, when you have it again, and do you have it more than one, once a year, or, or is, is this normally done in the summertime? We do try to do some camps during spring break. We don't have anything definitely scheduled for next year, but we're looking forward to the summer for sure. Well, I'm sure you'll let us know, and I'm sure that we'd love to come back and visit again. Thank you so much, Joan. We appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're here for tea? Did you know that? No, we're here for tea. I was a seamstress. Everyone knows I was a seamstress. And George Washington came to me and he wanted me to design a flag. Excuse me. He loved his flag. You've seen this before. This is his personal flag, correct? But it looks different than our flag. It has 13 stars, right? But the stars look very different. How many points do these stars have? Yes. They have six. Well, you know what? I'm a seamstress, and it is very, very, very difficult to make a six-pointed star. And I said, George, do you know how long it's going to take me to do that? Let me show you. Right, George? Let me show you. My father told me to bang at every door and wake the men no matter what. Tell them that the British were coming. They were burning Danbury and to meet at Colonel Weddington's house by daybreak. I did this, and it turned out to be quite a success. And I'm famous for capturing British redcoats. Well, when I captured these red coats, I marched them down into the town, and I turned them over to Captain Frost, who was the head of our Minutemen in our town. And I told those red coats, if you live to get back, you tell King George that a 58-year-old woman captured six of his royal grenadiers. The cargo shall not be landed. We will not drink their tea. John Hancock? The governor says that the ships will stay and the cargo will be. Daniel Bradley. And we must do something to stop this. So. Brother Abigail and I will tell you I have an idea. Samuel Adams? Good cheese with this meeting can be no more the same thing. This meeting gathered up some now and brought the novel to the sweat. Nathaniel Bradley. It becomes necessary.
necessary for one people to dissolve political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth and the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm here at uh, Patriots Camp, and I'm standing here with one of our founding fathers, President Thomas Jefferson. Mr. President, what brings you here today? Um, I got an invitation from Joan Garcia to come and speak to the children, and I took advantage of that invitation. Well, I think that they are probably so thrilled to have someone, uh, one of our founding fathers, the birth of our nation, for you to come visit. Um, let me just ask you, do you think you'll come back? Oh, absolutely. It's been a joy to be here. The children seem, you know, very encouraged, and I think they're learning a lot about the founding of the nation, and enjoyed it very much being here. Well, I think that um, from what I see, they're absolutely enjoying this camp. So let's just end with, what's, your, what's a parting thought that you would like to leave these children as the camp ends today? Just to uh, appreciate the founding of this nation, um, and how beautiful and unique that founding was, and to understand you know, the, the true essence of this nation. Well, we appreciate that you came from so far away to be with us here today at Patriots Camp. Thank you, President Jefferson. My pleasure. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth and the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit. Thank you, Sharon. That was great. And I hope that sparks the kids' interest in American history. I'm sure it will. Now it's off to Kandersteg, Switzerland. Let's go. Valley now in Kandersteg. Kandersteg is about 52 square miles and about 1,100 people live here year round. And over my shoulder, you can see the Doldenhorn. You don't see it every day because uh, the cloud cover uh, is a little bit lower than the peak of that mountain, but we're pretty lucky today. So uh, we're going to enjoy ourselves going down to the gondola and getting a different view of things. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm with Rob Grantham, and he's here at the International Boy Scout Center. Tell us a little bit about that, Rob. Absolutely. The International Boy Scout Center was founded in about 1924, when Baden-Powell bought the land uh, that was, was produced after they built the tunnel here. This was all wasteland, it was all the till, and the building down there was what was used to house the workers. Work on the nine-mile-long Lotsberg Tunnel began in 1906. There were 38 fatalities in the construction, but since the project was completed, it opened the Kandar Valley to tourism. Ever since, thousands of year-round tourists flock to this majestic playground in the Swiss Alps. And the Swiss Scout Organization, together with Baden-Powell in England, they, they bought this land, and they, since then it's been the International Scout Center. So, so how, many, how many scouts do they get here during a, the summer? Oh, that's, that's a question I can't answer, but it's got to be 30,000. Oh, really? I mean, we've probably yeah. got 1,000 boys here at the moment, a mixture of Boy Scouts America, which I'm a part of, but we have uh, scouts from other scouting nations as well. Good, so they all have a good time. How long do they stay when they come? Well, we're here for a week. Okay. I mean, we come here regularly, we come here in the winter as well. We camp in the, we camp in the snow and we build ice shelters and things like that. But right now it's a beautiful sunny day. 
a couple of days ago, it was heavy rain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you can actually see the golden horn. You can, you can indeed, yeah. So this is just a beautiful place to be. We've been doing practicing archery over there. And the boys come here, they get to do all the classic scout stuff. It's great. And we have Boy Scouts of America, as you probably gathered. I am, we have me members from other countries in BSA, but we're all yeah. proud. And yesterday, of course, was the 4th of July. So we were felt very proud to take part in those celebrations. And we retired a few flags, which was great. a great thing to experience. Good, thank you, Rob. Pleasure. Enjoy yourself, have a good time here. Left hand shake? Yes, sir. Right? Left hand shake for the scouts. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, on a bright sunny day like this, one of the great things to do in the Kander Valley is take the gondola up to the top of the mountain. Now there are about four or five gondolas in this valley going every every direction. Today uh, we're, we're going to the, the western end of the valley and checking that out. So let's hit the gondola and see what we see up on top. We're on the gondola now. That was easy. It takes eight minutes, right, to get to the top? Yes. Yeah, he's, he's, our, uh, he's our engineer. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you, if you just pan out here and you'll take a look in the valley. Uh, and there, folks, is the Kander Valley. Well, we made it to the top, and uh, at the end of the gondola, there's a neat little restaurant up here in the mountains. And if you see, uh, uh, a, if you need a room with a view, this is the place. Uh, imagine what you'd pay for this in New York City. Uh, we hit a little rest stop here along the hiking trail and there's a panoramic view of this huge valley with the river running down below. You can hear the river from here, but it's probably a mile and a half away. There's lots of snow yet to come off these mountains. It'll keep coming off all year until they get more late in the fall. As a matter of fact, it was snowing up here uh, just the day before yesterday. Well, that's all for tonight, folks. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Lou Green saying goodbye for America's Crossroads, and we'll see you where the roads cross, wherever that is. Bye-bye. <laughs>